The Gerblin's been swinging a hot bat of late. Seven for his last 15. Here's the two and one. Deep to left. That ball is gone. The crowd loves it. I've never heard this much generic goblin noise. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Also, as of today, December 31st until January 28th at 11.59pm Eastern Standard Time, this means during that time frame, if you place an order for over $10 or more, you'll be given one entry into a giveaway for Ravnica Allegiance Booster Box. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Happy New Year, and welcome back to Andrew Sounds Gross. I'm actually feeling better, although it doesn't sound like it, which is unfortunate. To start the new year off, we decided to play a mono blue game, and this week I'm playing Misform Ultimus, keeping two islands, Swiftfoot Boots, Rapid Hybridization, Wing Sliver, Shifting Sliver, and Commit. Kevin is playing Psy, keeping Mirror Retriever, Ponder, Island, Buried Ruin, Crystal Shard, Badalkin Shackles, and Mana Drain. Original Fred is playing his Baral deck, keeping Mox Amber, Two Islands, Sensei's Divining Top, Consecrated Sphinx, Sage of Fables, and Reliquary Tower. And lastly, Jameson is playing his Arcanist deck, keeping Two Islands, Pact of Negation, Guard Gamazoa, Chasm Skulker, Fencer's Journal, and Treasure Cruise. I win the die roll, and I start us off. I play an island, and I pass to Fred. Fred plays a Reliquary Tower as his land for turn, and casts a Soul Ring, tapping the ring to cast his top, and he uses it upon its entering. Jameson plays an island, and he passes turn. Kevin also plays an island, and casts Ponder. I play an island for my turn as well, and I cast Swiftfoot Boots, passing to Fred. Fred plays an island for his turn, and out comes Baral. We then see a Mox Amber hit the field, and Fred passes turn. Jameson plays an island, and he passes. Kevin plays an island, and he passes. I play a Sliver Hive, and I cast Supreme Phantom. With Fred almost completely tapped out, I use my Rapid Hybridization to kill Baral, giving Fred a 3-3 Frog token and passing. Fred plays an island for his turn, and he casts Consecrated Sphinx in his main phase. Thankfully, Kevin has a Mana Drain for it, and we pass to Jameson. Jameson plays an island for his turn, and he casts a Psychic Membrane, passing to Kevin. Kevin has six Floating Colors in his main phase, and uses two of it to help cast Psy in his main phase. Kevin then casts a Vidalcan Shackles, gaining a Thopter from Psy. We then see a Mirror Retriever, and Kevin gains another Thopter. I play an island for my turn, think about attacking, and pass to Fred. Fred draws, and passes. Jameson has no land for turn as well, but he does cast a Chasm Skulker in his main phase. Kevin plays an island for his turn, and he passes. I draw, and I pass turn. Fred draws for turn, but is behind on lands. He then passes to Jameson. Jameson also doesn't have a land, but he does cast Guard Gamazoa, passing to Kevin. Kevin plays a Buried Ruin as his land for turn, and he passes to me. I cast a Hedron Archive in my main phase, and tap it to equip the Supreme Phantom with his new shoes, and I pass to Fred. Fred plays an island for his turn, and wants to cast Baral, but he doesn't want it stolen with the shackles, so he passes. Jameson plays an island, and remembers to put a plus one plus one counter on his Chasm Skulker as he passes to Kevin. Kevin plays a Ghost Quarter, and he casts Expedition Map. This gives him a Thopter, and moving to combat, he hits Fred for two with two of his Thopters. Kevin then passes. For my turn, I play Unesh in my main phase, and after some goading from Kevin, Fred agrees to counter it. He rewinds it, and I pass my turn. At the end of my turn, Fred activates his top. Fred casts Deep Root Waters in his main phase, and he passes turn. Jameson draws, adding another plus one plus one counter to his Skulker. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Kevin cracks his expedition map, and he goes to find an Inventor's Fair. Kevin then also activates Psy, sacrificing the Retriever and a Thopter to draw a card and with the Retriever dying, he returns his Expedition map to hand. Kevin plays his Inventor's Fair as his land for turn, and moves to cast a Grand Architect, but this gets countered with a Dream Fracture from Jameson. Kevin and Jameson draw a card from it, and Kevin then casts his own top, gaining a Thopter from casting it. He then recasts his Expedition map, gaining another Thopter, and he passes turn. I draw for turn, and I pass to Fred. At the end of my turn, Fred activates his top once more. Fred draws and plays an Island for turn. He moves to combat, and swings his frog at Kevin. Before moving to blockers, Kevin activates his shackles and steals Jameson's psychic membrane. He blocks with it, which has him drawing a card, and the membrane dies. In his second main phase, Fred casts a Sage of Fables, and gets a 1-1 Hexproof Merfolk from casting thanks to the Deep Root Waters. 
Jameson draws her turn and gets another counter on his Skulker. He plays a myriad landscape which comes in tapped and moves to combat. He swings the Skulker at Kevin who takes the hit for 6. Jameson then passes and Kevin activates his top, putting it on top and drawing a card. Kevin gains a life on his upkeep to the fair trigger as he has more than enough artifacts. He recasts his top, getting another Thopter. With the top on the stack, Fred activates his own top to draw a card, and he casts the counter spell that's been waiting for him to draw. As a result, Kevin's top is countered, and Kevin moves to cast a Master Transmuter. He gets another Thopter, but I counter it with a commit, putting it second from the top. Moving to combat, Kevin hits Fred for two again with two Thopters, and he passes to me. I draw for turn, and I cast Memory Side of Commit. Responding to the spell, Jameson flashes in Nivix Barrier, and we then shuffle our hands and graveyards into our library, and draw seven. I then play an island for turn, and I pass to Fred. Thankfully, Kevin is paying attention, and he points out to Jameson that his Kulker should have seven extra counters on it because of the draw. Fred plays an island for his turn, and he casts Trinket Mage. This lets him go and find his top again, and he puts it to his hand, and then casts it. He passes to Jameson. Jameson draws and gains another counter on his Skulker. He plays an island for his turn, and he cracks his landscape to go and find two more islands. He then casts a wall of water in his main phase, and he moves to combat. This time, Jameson swings the Skulker at me for 14, which I graciously take. Kevin untaps for turn, and gains one from his fair trigger. He plays a Temple of the False Cod as his land for turn, and moving to combat, deals four to Fred with Thopters. Kevin then casts a Scrap Trawler in his second main phase, gaining the Thopter on cast. Unfortunately for Kevin, Fred uses Dissolve and scries one and keeps the card there and counters the spell. Kevin then casts Reshape, where X is two, and sacrifices a Thopter. He goes and grabs Ethereum Sculptor and puts it into play and passes to me. I draw for turn, and I drop a Merfolk Sovereign in my main phase. I then pass to Fred. Fred plays an island for his turn, and he casts Propaganda. I get some sweet revenge though, rewinding Fred's spell this time. He activates his top to try and fight through it, but can't find a counter spell, and the spell gets countered. Fred then casts Preordain, scrying two, and bottoms one, and keeps one on top, drawing it. Fred then casts Counterbalance, but Kevin stops it with an Arcane Denial, and Fred passes turn. Jameson draws for turn, and so does Kevin, and Fred draws two. Jameson's Skulker also gains another plus one plus one counter, and we then see a Jushi Apprentice in his main phase. Jameson then casts Chill of the Foreboding to make everyone mill five. He then casts a Glacial Wall, and moving to combat, Jameson swings the Skulker at Fred, who chumps with a token. Kevin gains one life on his upkeep to the Fair Trigger, and he plays his own Myriad Landscape as his land for turn. He casts Lightning Greaves, which gives him a Thopter, and it resolves. He then puts the Greaves onto Psy, and Kevin moves to combat. He swings six Thopters at Fred, and Kevin then passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, I flash in a Stunt Double, and have it come in as a copy of Psy. I play an Island for my turn, and moving to combat, hit Kevin for one with my Supreme Phantom. I then pass to Fred, and at the end of my turn, Fred uses his top to look at the top three. Since he knows what he's drawing, Fred flips over and pays the miracle cost for his Devastation Tide after he reveals it as his draw for turn. Jameson has no response, and Kevin tries to negate it. Fred is ready to fight through this though, and uses Dissipate to counter the counter. Responding to Fred's counter, I crack my Hedron Archive to draw two cards, but with no counter, all the non-land permanents go back to our hands. Fred then moves to his main phase, playing an island, and recasts Soul Ring. He then recasts his Mox Amber, and taps his Soul Ring to cast and activate his top once more as it resolves. Jameson plays an island for his turn, and he casts Thought Reflection in his main phase. He then recasts Jushi Apprentice, and he passes turn. Kevin draws for turn, and plays an island. He recasts Psy, and then resolves an Ethereum Sculptor, which gives him another Thopter as it comes in. This lets him cast his Expedition Map for free, gaining more Thopters as he does so. He then casts Lightning Greaves again, and he's almost back up to what he was before. Kevin then gears up Psy, and swings Psy at Fred for one commander damage. At the end of Kevin's turn, I reflash in the Stunt Double, and have it be a copy of Psy once more. I play an Island for my turn, and I cast Hivestone, which has my copied Psy make a Thopter on cast, which also becomes a Sliver upon the resolution of the Hivestone. I then cast Swiftfoot Boots, making another Thopter token, and Kevin's got my back. Fred plays an island, and promises to play nice with the table. He casts Jace Bellerin, aka Baby Jace, and upticks Jace, letting everyone draw a card, which in turn has Jameson drawing two because of the Thought Reflection. Jameson draws two for turn, and casts Frey Sanity on Kevin. Jameson then casts the second half of the combo, Traumatize, and targets Kevin to mill him for half of his library. The spell is on the stack, and Kevin sacrifices two Thopters to Psy's ability to try and draw a card. He can't find a counter though, and dies at the end of Jameson's turn. 
Also at the end of Jameson's turn, I flash in Naru Meha. I play an island for my turn, and I cast Marrow Harbinger, going to find a Merfolk. I grab a Master of the Pearl Trident, and I put it on top. I then recast my Merfolk Sovereign, and move to combat. Swinging my Thopters, Naru Meha and Sai at Fred for 6. Fred draws for turn, and down takes Jace so that only he draws a card. He then recasts Baral, and Sage of Fables, which deprives Fred of a plus one plus one counter because of bad sequencing. Fred then passes turn. Jameson plays a tapped Talamar Depths as land for turn, and basically ponders. He then casts Treasure Cruise, delving away most of his graveyard to draw 6. Jameson then casts Cage Sun, but thankfully I counterspell it, and he passes to me. I draw for turn, and I cast my Master the Pearl Trident. Fred responds and casts Cryptic Command, countering it and tapping all of my creatures. I then cast a Grand Architect, taking a page from Kevin's book, and recast my Supreme Phantom. I then equip the Greaves onto my Phantom, and moving to combat, hit Fred for two. Fred casts Lightning Greaves in his main phase, putting them onto Baral. He then down takes Jace to draw a card, and drops a Dose into Perfection, which I now realize I need to go in my Misform deck. Fred then recasts his Trinket Mage to go and find a one drop or less artifact. He grabs and puts Elixir of Immortality to his hand, and passes. Jameson casts a Chancellor of the Spire, but doesn't get a chance to cast any spells for free because Fred stops it with an Insidious Will. This gives Fred a Wizard token, and this has met the Docent's requirements, flipping it to reveal a final iteration. We then see the triumphant return of Jameson's Chasm Skulker, and Jameson then casts Jace's Phantasm. I cast my own Soul Ring in my main phase, gaining another Thopter token from my Cyclone. I then cast Misform, and move the boots onto my commander. I then tap my Merfolk Sovereign to make Misform unblockable, and swing the Harbinger and Misform at Fred. Fred takes 7 commander damage, and 4 from the Harbinger, and I then pass to Fred. Fred casts Baral's Expertise in his main phase, and bounces my Supreme Phantom and two of my Thopters with his Sorcery spell. I then sacrifice the two Thopters of Sai's ability to draw a card before they go to my hand, and Fred gets to put out Deep Root Waters again for free thanks to the Expertise. Fred also remembers he should have another Wizard token because of his final iteration, and does so. He then casts an Elixir of Immortality, and down takes Jace to draw a card. Fred then plays an island, and asks for my life total. He then swings everything at me, and puts me to one life, passing to Jameson. Jameson draws for turn, and gives his Skulker another counter. He then casts a Mana Vault in his main phase, and activates Tomio, who used to be the Jushi Apprentice, which he'd flipped at the end of Fred's turn, to draw 10 cards. He then boldly casts Dream Halls, which is just nightmare fuel when playing with a table of monocolored decks, and Fred activates his top to look at the top 3. He then taps the top to put the top on top, and draws a card. Jameson then casts Future Sight by discarding a wall, and Fred casts Arcane Denial to counter it, thankfully. This gives Fred another Wizard token, which also gets a plus one plus one counter from the Sage of Fables as it enters. Jameson then casts a Gin of Wishes by discarding another card. He activates the Gin, revealing a Dream Fracture, which does nothing. Jameson then drops Jace Memory Adept, and upticks him to draw two cards while milling himself for one. We then see a Baby Jace hit the field, and after he discards a card, he down takes him to draw two more. Sadly, as all things must come to an end, Jameson is then able to resolve a Reigns of Power, and steals Fred's board. This gives him enough power on Creatures with Flying to take Fred and I out in one swing, and Jameson wins the game. Game review time. So, this actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was imagining some kind of counterfest, never resolve a spell until someone wins through combo on turn 600, but there was a pleasant amount of action. I've thoroughly enjoyed my Misform Ultimus deck since leaving it up, but unfortunately it faltered a little bit, and I really needed to rely on memory this game to be able to get a new hand and some gas going. Once again, I think Kevin did a great job showcasing just how resilient and recurrable his side deck really is. It didn't matter if his board was bounced back to his hand, or things were countered, he was able to recur them easily from his graveyard, and since most of his creatures come from Psy anyway, rebuild his board as he was casting his mana rocks after being bounced back to his hand. Fred's Baral deck runs something like 21 or 22 counterspells, but I guess when you have to fight against three other people running similar amounts of counterspells, you do run out eventually. His deck did give me a couple of ideas of cards that I want to now try out for Misform, so thanks Fred. Jameson warned us as he sat down that his deck was still incomplete, as his Arcanist deck was eventually going to become a mono blue mill deck, but it wasn't there yet. I think as a result of this statement and the fact that early on he was just casting some kind of generic walls, people really undervalued his deck. I definitely think that Fred and I should have paid more attention to him, especially when he took Kevin out in one turn, but we were too busy beating the heck out of each other to really notice. As is often the case, this allowed Jameson to sit back, build up his board, and eventually steal the game. 
please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTG Mudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTG Mudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTG Mudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.